had enough.
Hey everybody, it's commentary time. Hey, I want to uh, start by thanking Sim for submitting this contract. Sim really has it in for the Blackbriar family. And uh, the terms of this contract were that I was to eliminate the three Blackbriar children. Maven was not included in the contract. But the deal was that I had to get in and out of the city of Riften without being seen. And uh, I had to do everything I could to try and make it look um, less like murder, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Now, this one was really challenging because much of the success of this mission was completely dependent upon surveillance and uh, use of very specific time windows when I knew that these characters were going to be in certain locations where they would be vulnerable. By vulnerable, I mean in a position where they could be eliminated without the outside world bearing witness to the attacks. So that was extremely challenging to figure that out, and it did take literally some surveillance of these characters to figure out what their habits were and their patterns. But the Shadeling did figure that out, and let's talk about that. First, we need to infiltrate the city. Now, I'm going to use Blink. Uh, the first thing I did here was get up on top of the stables. The reason I wanted to get up here is because this gave me a view of a seldom accessed area above the main gates that actually has a door. Now, you can't climb up here, but when you have an ability like Blink, you can get into that space and gain access to the door, which means getting in the city without having to deal with the guards. So this is kind of a, a, a porch or something that sits uh, right over the top of the main gates. Now, once inside, obviously, I've got one guard to deal with. <clears throat> so my objective with this guard was really just to use a glamour to try and disguise my presence, basically. Control the individual's mind um, so that, you know, there was no memory of Shadling having been here, anything like that. So with that guard under control, I went invisible, scooched around the corner here, had a look around to see if anyone was around that might see me, and to also get this gate open. With the coast clear, I could just kind of scoot around here and have a look down the other side. At this point, I really had no specific plan for the route that I was going to take to the Blackbriar's house. This direction did not look very promising. Uh, there's a guard there. Not entirely certain what the range is on my blink spell. It seemed a little bit risky. So what I elected to do was come around this side and get up onto this second level deck that runs around this side of town. Now, first attempt at the blink spell was obstructed again, so I had to move out, but I got up here. Now, once up here, I'm still kind of messing around here to try and figure out, okay, where do I go from here? My goal is obviously to stay out of sight, but to try to get to the Blackbriar's residence as quickly as I possibly can, as efficiently as I can. So, understanding that people from the ground could potentially see me as well, I'm just, you know, making liberal use of Ghost Walk, giving myself these 10 or 20 second intervals to kind of explore and come up with a plan without risking being spotted. All right. Going the back way didn't seem like a good idea either. What I was really trying to do was get in the second level doorway of their house. If you if you look at the Blackbriar's house, there's kind of a, a patio or a, a porch that extends out over the front door. Well, there's a door there as well. Gaining access to that shouldn't be a big deal with Blink. So for me, it was just a route to get there. And I kept coming back to the back here thinking that that might be an option, but it just seemed too obstructed. It seemed like I was it was going to be too many transitions, too many blinks to get there. So ultimately what I ended up doing is going straight across the street, which was one blink and then got me a perch on the roof of this building here, which actually is the B and Barb. From here, it's a straight shot right across the marketplace to Maven's house. And we're in. 
Now the real trick comes, okay? What I'm looking for is a time window between about 11 p.m. and 12 p.m. During this time window, um, Ingen is home alone. She's home alone for a little while. She just kind of hangs out and stuff. And then Hemming and uh, Maven arrive home at midnight. So I'm going to use this hour to get set up. So you saw I advanced the clock so that I have approximately an hour, a little less than an hour to get set up. Now what I'm putting down here is something called a culling room. This is actually really important to everything working. Uh, Maven is not a character that can be killed. She is essential. And I really did not want to make her unessential. She's not a target. But what I needed to do was neutralize her. Now the culling rune will not kill Maven because uh, she is essential. But it will cause a temporary paralysis, which may give me exactly the delay I need to ensure that I'm able to eliminate Hemming and Ingen. So here we're in Ingen's room. I'm going to lay a trap here for her. And for her, I'm going to, to select a poison rune. So I'm going to dual cast this. I'm doubling up on it because I want to increase the power. What this is going to do is... is poison the enemy, but it doesn't kill them immediately. Once they're poisoned, the clock starts ticking as the poison enters their system and begins to have devastating effects, but it will not kill them immediately. It will kill her over time. All right? Now, Ingen is, is actually in the house right now. We, as you know, we came in on the second level. Ingen, at this time of the night, is hanging around uh, down in the first level. Okay, here I was just double checking to make sure that after dual casting my poison runes, that my culling rune did not go away. So the culling rune is really designed to buy me some time because Maven and Hemming arrive home at exactly the same time. But strangely enough, when they enter the building, Maven appears on the second level. She actually comes in that second level door. Don't ask me how, because there's no stairway or ladder there. But she comes in that door. Hemming comes in the lower level door right here. And you can see Ingen walking across the opening there. And Maven can be a really nasty customer. If, she, if you get her ire up, she will come after you with spells. And even if I'm using Ghost Walk, even if I'm invisible, it's possible that some of these characters, when they get really aggressive and when you're in their space, they can spot you. They can somehow home in on your location, even though you're invisible. So at this point, I'm just waiting. I'm biding my time. Now, the plan is that Maven will hit the Culling Rune that will take her out of commission temporarily, but hopefully just long enough for Ingen's poison to run its course. And then with those, both of those characters eliminated, her aggression will go away. That's what I'm hoping for. So right now we saw Ingen. She's headed downstairs, and she's just about to trip that rune. Now I get in here anticipating Hemming's arrival. Bang! He's killed instantly by frost runes right in the living room. Now I go invisible, and now we're just waiting. We're waiting for the clock to run on Ingen. And we also saw right before Ingen, or before Hemming entered, you saw a yellow flash. That was the culling rune. Okay, now Ingen's dead. Now we can confirm our deaths. Hemming, dead in the living room. Now he's going to be filled with what will appear to be stab, stab wounds which will be actually icy shrapnel. That ice will, of course, melt, and it'll look like stab wounds. Whereas Ingen will be poisoned, and if everything goes right, Maven will be none the wiser, because when all of this happened, she was essentially unconscious on the floor. All right, I don't, we don't hear her in there. I'm listening. Okay, when I open the door, my ghost walk is tripped. So we got to go up and, and have a look. But what I'm thinking is there's, there's very specifically a narrative I have in mind here. One of the things that we hear about Ingen is that she's a strange child. She's into poisons. She's, you know, keeps to herself and all this stuff. So I'm thinking of this as, you know, when people come to investigate what happened here, it's going to look like a murder-suicide. You know, it's going to look like 
Um, Ingen went after her brother with a knife or something like that and then drank poison afterwards, that kind of thing. Um, that was that was kind of what my mindset was when I was putting the scene together and prepping for this. So Maven is not running around. She's not coming after us. So we're going to go up and have a quick look. Just playing it safe using Ghost Walk here to make my way through the room. The door is already open, so that's not an issue. She's not on the floor. Yes, she's gone to bed. So the culling rune activated. She was paralyzed, but when she came out of it, all the action was over. The aggression was gone. She went to bed. Now, the last one to get, of course, is Sibby. And Sibby is in Riften Jail, which makes his situation pretty challenging. First, we actually got to get there. We got to get we got to get close to the jail. So, in order to kind of scope out what was going on, I had to get closer. The fog is so thick tonight that I don't have a clear view. So, with this guard, you can see there's a guard uh, that kind of walks into my into my viewing area there. Here he comes, right there. So, if I hit him with uh, mind control. Then I can walk him up there. I can see through his eyes, figure out where the other guards are positioned. So that's essentially what I did here. Get the rift, just a standard rift and guard. He happened to walk into my view. So I'm walking him up here using mind control. Now again, he does not have, you know, I can't make him attack his comrades. He's not a bandit or anything like that, so I can't make him attack his comrades. But I can see through his eyes, and I can see where everybody else is and what they're doing. And now I know I've got two guards up here to deal with. There's one that's right in front of the entranceway there. Uh, and he, he switches back and forth from one side to the other. So that gives me a pretty good idea of what I'm dealing with. Now I'm going to use Blink to get close. Now I've released the guard I had mind control over. So you can see he's headed back right now. My first blink didn't work, obstructed by the railing. So I've got to try it again. And what I'm doing here is just trying to get close, right around the corner here of the wall, all right? At this point, we can ghost walk. And then all I've got to do is get around the corner and up to the jail door. I will actually use the jail door to break the ghost walk spell, which will allow me to travel inside. I won't, I won't pop back to where I cast the spell because the door will take over and bring me inside. Just like that. Now the real fun begins. <laughs> so uh, we've got a guard right around the corner. He's sitting right by the door. Um, first thing I'm going to do is use Compelling Whispers to control his mind. So I'm just going to peek around the corner just enough to control his mind. Compelling Whispers will basically calm him. And now, from this vantage point, I can use Ghost Walk, and I can kind of freely go near him here. I'm going to pick the lock, which will once the lock is picked... It'll teleport me back to where I was when I cast it. So I'm kind of taking a chance here that no one's going to come in the entryway. I'm using that, that little kind of L-shaped hallway to conceal my presence here. So the door's open now, casting it again. And I've already dealt with this guard using Compelling Whispers. Now i got to deal with the guard who walks patrol where Sibby is located. So I'm going to find a spot where he can't possibly miss my rune, and I'm going to put down a gaze rune. This is going to allow me to control his mind as well. We saw the gaze rune uh, used in another episode of Shaving for Hire. It's a fun one. Now we're going to go invisible, and now it's time to actually start the attack. So I'm kind of waiting at this point for the guard, the patrolling guard, to hit my rune, and then I'm going to follow him right into the prison. Now, Sibby, I'm going to deal with him using a Frost Nova. Lots of damage right through the bars. And he is done. And my work here is done. Now I just need to get out of the city. 
Now, the cool thing about leaving the city is you never know what's going to happen in Skyrim. Sometimes uh, the game gives you a gift. Sometimes it foils your every attempt to do cool things. But that's just kind of how it is. In this particular case, it kind of worked for me in a way. Uh, there were some vampires that attacked uh, once I came back out. And it, it caused a whole bunch of, of mayhem uh, that I was able to use, at least in part, to cover my escape. So that actually worked out pretty good. Here I was just kind of messing around with Blink to see if it was possible for me to blink over these walls. It was not. So you can see the guards are good and distracted now. And there's a little bit of an opening here just above the railing. I want to cast this right above the railing so I get into the canal and it drops me right on the dock. So I'm literally dropped right down below where the fighting is happening right now. So at this point, uh, just following along the docks here, I'm able to get more than halfway across the city without being detected, which is awesome. Now it's just a matter of making that final run towards the gate. And again, this vampire attack is going to work to my advantage here. So now I come down here and I scooch around the corner. Because of the vampire attack, the guard who was at this gate that I had charmed last time around has been pulled in to fight the vampires. So he's somewhere around the marketplace right now, leaving this door access wide open. Now I grabbed the mind control because I wasn't sure if he was there or not. Turns out he wasn't. Turns out I didn't need it. And then ghost walk to make sure no one sees me as I scoot around the corner here. And into the same doorway that I entered before. Now my escape procedure is pretty much the same as what I used on the way in. I'm going to blink over to the roof of the stables, which gives me a wide area back behind there in, in the woods that I can, I can blink into... Uh, to escape without being seen. So on the roof, and then a couple more blinks get me well away from the scene of the crime without being detected. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I hope you like this one. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was really interesting. It, it, I had to use a different set of tools, I think, in this one than I've used in, in some of the previous ones. Hey, uh, thank you for your submissions. I look forward to getting more submissions. Uh, I have a number of, of additional uh, Shadling for Hire episodes in the works, in production right now, so you can look forward to some more fun with the Shadling. Thank you all for your support, and I will see you next time.